Well, no rain to worry about today, but as you'd expect this time of year, very muggy in downtown Jacksonville here at TIAA Bank Field. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with the Denver Broncos. Lock now on first down. And he's going to have the hook up to Sutton. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27th. Complete to Portland Sutton. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and eight at the 27-yard line. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Lock working out of the gun. Got a man open. It's Sutton. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there. First down. Brand, I think we can see early on they're making a concerted effort to get him the football. So to me, that means they like the matchup that they have. They feel like he's better than the guys that are covering him. Two plays, two passes. We'll see if they go back to that well. On first down, Lock. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there. Second down. For Jerry Judy. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Throwing again. Lock. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And finally brought down at the 43. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups. And they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. They'll run. This is Melvin Gordon. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Shotgun snap to lock. He'll find Lindsey here. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. And a good sign for them right now to have their young quarterback looking confident on the opening drive. Now, we haven't met a young quarterback, a veteran quarterback. It doesn't matter. We haven't met a quarterback yet that doesn't tell us he's confident about his abilities, right? That's true. But when you're young, it's really important to get off to a good start because it does build up that confidence and allows him to play better as the game goes on. Especially crucial here on the road. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Lock on target to Fant for a Bronco first down. They'll run for the first time with Philip Lindsay. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. The Bronco ball carrier. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. On second down, a run with Lindsey. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. He was brought down at the 26. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Throwing his lock on third down. Screen pass to Lindsey. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape 
or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved. Just as you said, they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. The kick is good. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Minshew going to lead up the Jaguars first and 10 at their own 27. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. And connecting here with DJ Shark. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at the 45. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. His big tight end, Tyler Eifert, the intended receiver. But it'll be second down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. On second and ten, it's Minshew. Man open is Keelan Cole complete. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 35. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. So a first and ten now in Denver territory at the 35-yard line. It'll be Minshew again. And this one into the hands of D.J. Shark. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. At the 16-yard line. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Shotgun handoff to Thompson. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. The tackle that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Ball sits on the 10, second and five. They run it here with Thompson. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Now Minshew. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. And he finds himself open for an easy touchdown. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. Makes the score Jaguars 7, Broncos 3.
Dabo now after the touchdown. He'll kick this one away. And this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll hand this one off to Gordon. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. From the gun, it's locked. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Bronco first down. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Now Gordon on first down. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Four yards remain for second down. From the gun, Locke. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. That one, a first down pickup of eight. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. On first and 10, here's Locke. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. That catch good for only a couple. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and eight at the 38-yard line. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. To throw again on second down. Lock and an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Seventh play in the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. Again, they'll throw with Locke. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. A 55-yard attempt. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason.
after splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Taken about seven yards deep, and he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Minshew, first and 10. And he'll get this underneath to Thompson. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Well, you're under a minute to go here in the half. Field position not really in your favor, but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range. Yeah, you've got the lead. It's definitely a thought. Let's go ahead and try and increase it. But at the same time, I don't like the odds. I don't like where they are on the field. Got the lead. They've done well in the first half. Don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at each other wondering what if. Well, when you've got a tight end who can run, you've got to give him a shot to unlock the defense. Want to see what they can get taking the big shot downfield. That one winds up incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Able to complete this to Chanel. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Minshew on first and ten. The throw taken in by Cole. That catch good for only a couple. Pass complete to Keelan Cole. Out of bounds at midfield. A gain of two. Brings up second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Caught Eifert over the middle. And he'll go down shy of 40 at the 41. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Throwing on first down is Minshew. Complete to the right side. It's Eifert. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard at the 32-yard line. So we're at halftime with our score 7-6 in a tough-fought first half. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports halftime report. All right, coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Fielded in the end zone, and we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one-score game, first and ten here. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. At the 23-yard line. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. 47 Out of the gun is Minshew. And the Broncos get there and take him down. So they come out of the locker room trailing, but plays like that, they won't be trailing much longer. Defense really starting out well this second half. Yeah, they knew they had to jumpstart things a little bit. They really struggled in the first half trying to slow them down, but now they had a plan, made that adjustment that we always talk about, and it worked very well on that play. So third and long, here's Minshew. And he will find his man on the outside. Pass. 
And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want to catch the football first. The Broncos, the Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. Their defense just came up with a stop right out of the locker room, and now can the offense take advantage? Yeah, we don't want to turn this into something that it's not. It's only a one-score game, so it's not exactly a crucial possession. But at the same time, they'd like to get things started and at least come away with three points. Second and 10 now from the 27. Lock going to hand it off here to Gordon. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Lock going to try and throw on third down. And that is incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Denver. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Minshew sets to throw. Connection made with Chenault. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. They'll run on first down. Robinson. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. 38-yard line, second and nine. Here's Minshew. Got an open man, Keelan Cole. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. A gain of four brings up third and four. Looking to throw it, Minshew. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. It was Vaughn Miller who shot in there to get him down. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. At their own 24-yard line. Lock now on first down. And he's going to have the hook up to Sutton. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Three yards the gain there, second down. But there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. Throwing again on second down. Lock. This is the tight end fan. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. 
And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Throwing on first down is Locke. No escape for Locke, and he'll go down. Miles Jack with a sack. And we say it all the time, you have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Now he dumps this off over the middle. Six yards on the pickup, and they'll be facing a third and 12. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They tackle them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Throwing his lock on third down. That's going to be caught by Judy. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They get seven there, but it brings up four. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. The throw over the middle, taken in. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 13, it's a first down. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Keelan Cole, the intended target, and it's second down. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what'd you say to him? Yeah, it was really not right since I blew coverage, but since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. It's cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Now, the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice but work some clock yeah you're exactly right but the problem for them is still within a possession so they can't just sit on it running the ball they have to find a way to throw it effectively as well now Minshew he's got it complete to Thompson and he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here too and he may get a few more tacked on for good measure 26 yards on the play there They'll look to throw here on first down. His throw incomplete. Chris Conley, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. to the left side here for Eifert. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 
Mark that as a gain of 16 to set him up first and goal. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Second and goal, operating from the eight-yard line. Again, it's Robinson. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. tired bodies on that field but this is a big play third and goal and this is going to be caught but they'll say out of bounds so it's incomplete so decision time now because a field goal keeps it a one score game what are you thinking well i'm looking at the down and distance and that's where the issue comes in it's not short enough that it's a no-brainer and you go for it you have to analyze this one to me you take the field goal, take the points. I don't think you want to risk coming away with nothing. And Lambo will put this one through. And they bump the lead up to four now at 10-6. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction. All of a sudden, they're down. couple yards into the end zone and beyond the 20 but not by much in fact just a yard pass there to the 21 at their own 22 yard line now lock screen pass to Lindsay and this one goes nowhere losing yardage back at the 22 he was unable to shake free there they'll cover him for a loss of a yard oh i know it goes against the grain here it totally goes against it but you've got to drop the ball in that situation he makes a catch but he loses yards and doesn't get out of bounds locks trying to hurry him up with that clock running lock to throw And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Josh Allen in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Well, it was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it. Unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. Down four late. Got to go for it here on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's locked. 
And no, it's incomplete. The linebacker, Miles Jack, able to knock that one away. Well, they were looking for a clutch play there on fourth, unable to come up with it. How about that defense, though, huh? How about that D? Yeah, momentum swing. And, you know, I remember playing how much fourth downs were emphasized. You know, because... As you said, it's a momentum play. It's also a big test for you. You know, if people are going to go for it on fourth down, they believe you're not up to the challenge. You want to show them differently. Minshew down to a knee, victory formation, and that should be just about it. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. I thought it was pretty. <laughs> and it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zero. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.